Hey, what's up, you guys? Marty Schwartz here from GuitarJams.com. Hope you guys are doing well out there. Uh, I've got a nice little blues lesson uh, that I'm going to do right now, and it actually comes from a cool little uh, little thing that I had a lot of fun with. I put a question up on the Guitar Jams Facebook page, which is right down there, and I said I was going to pick five questions that are related to the blues, and I was going to answer them in a, in a video. And that person... You know, anyone that gets picked gets to win my Blues Masterclass DVD set, which you can see a link for. It's on sale right now. You can see the link down there for it. Uh, this lucky winner is named Pearson, and his question is, what equipment should people use to get the best blues sound? What are the best guitars, amps, pedals, etc.? Well, Pearson, congratulations. You win the Blues Masterclass. Um, we're gonna we're gonna show uh, I'm gonna zoom in and show you uh, a couple of uh, things that you might want to think about for getting a blues sound. Ultimately, though, uh, it's gonna be your playing ability. Um, obviously, equipment the right equipment's gonna help, but nothing will compare to you know being a good player and and using your hands and your heart and your soul to to create the blues but there are some great you know equipment tips that I'll have for you so uh, congratulations Pearson and uh, and I'm going to uh, show you some things right now here we go All right so equipment is quite a complicated uh, question to answer but when you're just thinking of your standard equipment uh, for playing blues I'll start with the uh, guitar right now I'm playing a this is a Fender Stratocaster, which uses pickups that look like this. Those are called single coil pickups. So what you get with a Strat or a Strat style guitar, that maybe looks similar to this and the pickups look similar to that, maybe the three knobs and the pickup selector, all that. Um, I find that that's a great blues guitar. It, it's a little bit brighter and not as heavy rock sounding per se, but it's great for your uh, I find that it really cuts through when you're playing rhythm. And then for soloing, uh, you know, if you think about the sound of Jimi Hendrix and Eric Clapton and Stevie Ray Vaughan, all three of those guys primarily used a Fender Stratocaster like this. Uh, the other alternative on guitar is a guitar that has humbuck humbucker pickups, and I'll show you that. Here is a... Gibson Les Paul Traditional, which is basically like a, uh, you know, like a newer, a newer Les Paul. Uh, it's only a few years old. And then you see these big square pickups. They're called humbuckers. Um, they're a lot thicker and hotter sounding. Um, they make more sound. So when you think of someone like Slash... He's obviously, you know, using a lot of, you know, rock sounds, but he's also using a humbucker style guitar. Now, when you think of a, a blues player like B.B. King or Freddie King, they both used um, hollow body guitars with humbuckers. A guitar like this. This is a Gibson ES-335. And this is another classic um, kind of blues guitar. B.B. King plays one of these, but he has no, he has the F holes are covered on his classic Lucille style guitar. But once again, you have the thickness and the, the hotter sound of the humbucker pickups. And then when you have the, a guitar that's hollow, you get a woodier, like a woodier, um, you know, more hollow sound. <laughs> it's kind of a repetitive word there with this guitar, but but that's what that's what you get. Another thing, whether you're playing that Fender style guitar or a humbucker style guitar like a Gibson, the pickup configurations uh, really do change the sound a lot. And I would say the classic kind of clean tone on your amp with a blue sound tends to be emphasizing this front pickup. Uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan on his Strat used the front pickup a lot, and you know BB King used the front pickup a lot. And, you know, for the soloing, it's the darkest sound. Um, but another trick with a humbucker guitar, uh, for instance, Joe Bonamassa plays uh, mostly humbucker guitars. He goes back to the back pickup, which tends to be a lot brighter, a lot tinnier sounding. Like, think old surf, 
rock or uh, like really bright country picking. Uh, the back pickup cuts through a lot more on a humbucker guitar and a Strat for that matter, but it's super bright. Uh, almost can be brittle and shrill. So what someone like um, Joe Bonamassa and Eric Johnson and Eric Clapton uh, all do is they take this back pickup, but then they roll the tone off until they find that little sweet spot. That's also known uh, sometimes as that woman tone. And that's something that happens a lot with humbucker guitars. Um, now, can you be good with an Ibanez? Of course you can. Uh, can you be good with a Squire? Yeah, of course you can. Could Hendrix play amazing if he took a string and tied it to a, a broom stick or something? And yes. So what I'm saying is don't get caught up in the equipment. Um, I learned guitar on a you know very mid-priced instrument that I saved up for. And uh, as I got better, I upgraded my equipment. So you can kind of put amps into two categories, although it's a little bit harder to do uh, nowadays with just the advance in technology and computers and so forth and so on. Uh, but the basic go-to amp for a uh, blues style or rock would be what's called a tube amp. Now you could say a tube amp or a solid state amp. A tube amp actually has vacuum tubes in the back that are pushing the sound. So what you get for whatever reason because of that technology and the way the tubes react to the sound and all that, uh, you basically get a warmer tone and I also find like a, uh, like a more elastic feeling when you attack the notes, which is kind of, uh, I guess what you would call a compression, like natural compression. So when you turn a, you know, you turn an amp, a tube amp up really high in volume, it reacts differently than when you turn it down at a low volume. And you can see in the back that the tubes are uh, reacting a certain way as well. Thus, people with tube amps, uh, you know, they got to turn it on, they got to warm it up. Uh, you know, there's some legendary story about <clears throat> Stevie Ray Vaughan like turning up all these amps and leaving them on for days or something like that. I mean, you know, it's one of those legendary kind of stories, but but basically the technology uh, is based on the, you know, the old old televisions, old radios were all had tube uh, transistors in there. So if you think about, you know, how people say vinyl's better and, and you know, complain about that kind of stuff with the tube amp, it, it, it kind of fits into that same category of a, of a classic soft, so, uh, more pleasant sound. Whereas the solid state amps, you know, all the really uh, lower, you know, lower entry level amps use more solid state technology because I think it's probably more affordable. It's based on a newer technology. Um, but they're going to be perfectly fine for you. Now we'll talk about uh, some pedals a little bit. Everybody needs some basic pedals. You know, there's some classic players, though, that just go straight into their amp and turn up the amp all the way, and they're absolutely ripping it up, and they don't need it at all. But what I like to do, and I'll just show you what's in my current rig, but it changes. It's not always the same. I like to just kind of experiment. But basically what I have, and I'd say the most important thing, would just be some kind of basic overdrive pedal. Uh, if you look down here at my pedal board, I actually have uh, two overdrive pedals. The green pedal there is a, uh, a very classic pedal. It would probably be the first pedal I'd recommend you getting, and that is a Ibanez Tube Screamer. That's just the standard one. It's not like a vintage one or anything like that. Um, but basically, it gives you a really great uh, overdrive sound. You can get some real warm distortion from it. Uh, but what a lot of legendary players, like SRV, for instance, would do is he'd use one where he'd have the kind of distortion part of it turned down and the volume turned all the way up and use it as just a little bit of a boost. And it kind of drives your amp a little bit, but it's not necessarily a distortion pedal. Uh, that's a great pedal to have there. Right next to it is uh, just my current favorite, like, real overdrive pedal. It's the full-tone uh, plimsoll pedal. 
and you know I just I just twiddle the knobs till I get a sound I like um, but basically that is just a great uh, really warm uh, overdrive distortion pedal so I'm using I tend to use that green one as a kind of that like a gritty clean boost and then the plimsoll is just my straight up overdrive pedal so anytime you hear me using uh, any kind of more gainy distortion stuff I'm typically just using that one and I just dial it in if it's a real heavy thing um, you know I turn the distortion up if it's more of a clean blues kind of thing I turn the distortion down um, right next to it is a wah-wah pedal, um, Voodoo Child, Jimi Hendrix Voodoo Child would be the, the one I think of immediately, uh, Steve Ray Vaughan's version as well is just amazing, uh, and that's really what it is, it gives you that wah-wah-wah-wah sound, and I don't use mine too much, uh, but it's kind of always need, <laughs> I find that I always need one, so if I didn't have it there, I would, you know, regret it, but uh, I use it sparingly, but it gives you that funky sound. Right next to it is a tuner pedal, so I can tune my guitar. Um, you know, that pretty much is self-explanatory. Uh, the bright blue one in the corner is a reverb pedal, which uh, my divided by 13 amp does not have reverb, uh, and it's, it's in the shop right now, but I use the reverb a lot with that, and you can get some really cool effects. Um, it's not necessary for your blues playing, but I like it. Um, and then the gray one is a delay pedal. It gives you echoes and effects. Uh, I use it, tend to use it more in a, kind of like the rock world than I would in a straight blues, but someone that used de delay a lot uh, was Pink Floyd. Um, you know, I mean, and that's pretty classic stuff right there. Uh, right next to it is just another kind of echo pedal, but for the most part, I kind of almost am just using the uh, a clean tone and the plimsoll. So if you if you have a bare bones pedal, or I mean you you don't have any pedals, and you want to get your first pedal, then uh, you know I would probably get one of those tube screamers or the plimsoll. Either one of those are awesome. And then I also have a looper. The red pedal is a looper pedal. I just have that set up all the time to practice and as you've seen me use in the videos and stuff. So hopefully that was helpful to you. Uh, nice little breakdown and we'll see you in the next one.